please access the materials for this webinar at the bit.ly link provided. There's a webinar viewing guide provided for your convenience. Those of you that are joining us on the phone, the materials that are provided at the bit.ly link are not required or necessary for this webinar. They're designed to supplement the experience. Those resources will be emailed out after the webinar. So if you've not already accessed the webinar resources and viewing guide in the Google Drive, please do so at this time. Okay. These materials are intended to be helpful, but they're not necessary for your participation. The webinar viewing guide is organized by question, resource, and a notes section. The webinar contains a series of questions that were submitted by interested parties, including many resources were utilized to develop the appropriate responses to those questions. The corresponding primary source for each question has been provided in the, Google, in the viewing guide as a reference after this webinar and for future use. This webinar is facilitated by the Florida Joint Center for Citizenship staff. I am Peggy Renahan. Together with Dr. Steve Maceda, Val McVeigh, and Chris Spinelli, we are collaboratively hosting this webinar. The Florida Joint Center for Citizenship is a bipartisan effort by Congressman Lou Fry and Senator Bob Graham. It is funded by the Florida Legislature. Please know that FJCC is committed to the development of enlightened, responsible, and actively engaged citizens. In pursuit of those efforts, we present to you what to expect when you're expecting the Civics End of Course Assessment. The Civics End of Course Assessment, also known as the Civics, the EOCA, is a state-developed, scheduled, and administered computer-based assessment designed to measure, measure student achievement on the next generation Sunshine State Standards and Civics. We're going to address some of the questions, comments, and concerns that were shared with us about the Civics EOCA. The Florida Department of Education provides a vast amount of resources to support end-of-course assessments. To learn more about the Civics end-of-course assessments or end-of-course assessments in general, know that there's a ton of viable information available on the FLDOE website for the Florida end-of-course assessments. Many of the documents and resources we're going to discuss today are available on this main page, pictured on the screen and available at this link. Throughout this webinar, we'll be pausing to answer any questions posed in the chat box that have not already been answered. Questions will be answered in the chat box during the presentation, but some of them we may need to go ahead and have for group discussion. So I'm going to pause at this time to ask my team, are there currently any questions? No, there are no questions at this time. Okay. Thank you, Steve. I'd like to remind everyone that this we webinar is being recorded. And your, question, and your questions and resources and activities posted in the chat box will be kept for us to develop future webinars and resources to meet your needs. Some of the most frequently asked questions about the Civics EOCA revolve around the content of the assessment. It seems like every teacher wants to know what's on the Civics EOCA. What's on the assessment is a question that's asked and answered options, provides detailed information about this standards-based assessment designed to assess the subject, and includes all of the information about the benchmarks, stimulus types, and test items. Once you click on the link on that page, you'll be taken to another website titled Test Item Specifications. On this site, you'll be able to download an electronic copy of the Civics Test Item Specification. And a copy has already been included in the resources for this webinar for your convenience. The test item specifications provide detailed information about what's on the test. The assessment is developed around the next generation Sunshine State Standards for civics specifically. The NGSSS are subdivided into benchmarks that identify what a student should know and be able to do following completion of a civics course. The civics end of course assessment test item specifications provide details about this standards-based assessment designed to assess civics and includes information about the benchmarks, stimulus types, and test items. The Civics EOCA specifications include information about how the assessment is structured. This is called reporting categories and located in Appendix D of the document. 
From the reporting categories section of the specifications in Appendix D, we know that there are 35 directly assessed civics benchmarks. From Appendix B of the specifications, we know that there are five also assessed benchmarks. The civics benchmarks have been organized into four reporting categories, each weighing and comprising 25% of the assessment. The assessment items are drawn from the four reporting categories based on the benchmarks in that category. Appendix D of the specifications also provides information about the number of questions and duration of the assessment. There are 52 to 56 items on the assessment. Each NGSSS EOCA is given in one 160-minute session with a 10-minute break after the first 80 minutes. Any student not finished by the end of the 160-minute session may continue working for up to the length of a typical school day. Team, are there any questions for discussion? Uh, not any particular questions right now, ma'am. All right. So then let's dig into what else we know about what's on the assessment. Cognitive complexity and assessment items are closely connected. The NGSS benchmarks identify what a student should know and be able to do in completion of a civics course. The assessment items are designed to measure what the student should know and be able to do using content and cognitive complexity. Cognitive complexity refers to the cognitive demand associated with an item. The cognitive classification implemented by the FLDOE is based upon Dr. Norman Webb's depth of knowledge, also known as DOK levels. The rationale for classifying a test item is by DOK, item, by DOK level of complexity focuses on the expectations made of the test item, not on the ability of the student. Page 12 of the specifications provides a useful table for aligning instruction with cognitive expectations. We will explore three sample test items from the specifications to learn more about content and cognitive complexity. These are included to illustrate how a single concept may be assessed by the test items with increasing cognitive complexity. Civic's low complexity test items rely heavily on recall and recognition of previously learned concepts and principles. Low complexity test items involve the recognition or recall of information such as a fact, definition, term, or simple procedure. These items can involve recognized information and identifying characteristics. Versus a civics moderate complexity test item, which involves more complex and more flexible thinking than low complexity test items require. Moderate complexity test items involve the engagement of some mental processing beyond recall and reproducing a response. They also involve examining relationships, determining cause and effect, and determining significance. Therefore, Students are using skills that they've learned in the course in conjunction with content to determine the appropriate response. Teachers often ask about students being assessed using a document, chart, graph, or picture. We refer to those as stimulus and graphics that a, students may have that a student may have never seen. The assessment is designed to measure a student's ability to apply and use content knowledge in multiple contexts. While a student may have never seen that particular st stimulus, the item is directly aligned to the content of the benchmark. More can be learned about the use of graphics in the specifications on page three. Civics high complexity test items make heavy demands on student thinking. Students must engage in more abstract reasoning, planning, analysis, judgment, and creative thought. These test items require that the student think in an abstract and sophisticated way, often involving multiple steps. Prior to appearing on any state, Florida state assessment, all civic test items must pass several levels of review as part of the development process. Florida educators and citizens, in conjunction with the FLDOE and the assessment contractors, scrutinize each and every item and materials related to test items prior to accepting the item for placement on the test. The FLDOE and the assessment contract review all test items during the item development process. Groups of Florida civics educators review the test items for content characteristics and align them to the item specifications. The content review focuses on validity, determine whether each item is a valid measure of the designated NGSSS benchmark as defined by the specifications for the test item. Please know that separate reviewers for bias and sensitivity are also conducted. 
the reporting categories inform us as to what content is going to be on the test. And the cognitive complexity chart on page 12 provides us insight into how those content, content might be measured in the items. Steve, do we have any burning questions? Uh, nothing at this point, ma'am. Oh my gosh, so this is either all information that everyone already knows and is comfortable with, or we are just wowing them. <laughs> we'll, we'll go with the wowing and that they already know it. <laughs> Perfect. All right, guys. So beyond what's on the test, there's also several additional questions related to the test in general, like considering administering this assessment. So information about administering the assessment can be found also on this main FLDOE website for the end of course assessment. One resource that's especially helpful is the end of course assessment fact sheet. It can be found under the assessments heading. It's important to note that there may be multiple during the, we're going to use the information from this fact sheet as the basis for answering which students are required to participate in the Civic COCA. There are several course codes that students could be enrolled in that would cause them these course codes are listed on the fact sheet. The fact sheet document contains several active links that can be used to access additional information. For example, the course descriptions that correspond with the course codes in the fact sheet can be accessed by clicking on the search box. The variety of courses associated with the terms associated search for description of one PDF. However, the course description includes all with the course. In all the civics courses, in addition to the civics benefit, many tools for social studies are also in the course description in the form of reading for history, noted by our end. What's on the civics EOC and not yet in this program where you take the assessment to improve the state civics EOCA is required to constitute Florida legislation. Florida Statute 1003.4156 states that 30% of a student's final grade will include the results from the Civics EOCA. Well, how then is that calculated? Florida statute requires that 30% be calculated to include performance on the Civics end of course of civics as a conversion scale. Each Florida district has the autonomy to develop their own conversion scale. Since we have multiple districts this webinar, I cannot emphasize to your school site for this information. That would be something I would suggest. Additionally, students don't have to pass the civics in the course assessment. They only have to pass the civics course. So I just mentioned achievement levels and scale scores. So what are achievement levels? They range from 1 to 5, and that's a method of categorizing student performance in the civics EOCA. Achievement at a level 3 indicates proficiency. Levels 1 and 2 are below satisfactory level. Levels 4 and 5 are above satisfactory level. Scale scores are what provide us with our achievement levels. So within each achievement level, there are varying sales scores. For instance, proficiency at level 3 on the Civics EOCA has a corresponding scale score of 394 to 412. Students scoring with this in, within this range are considered proficient. The 30% grade, grade, the 30% of students' grade is a district decision. Most districts use a conversion scale based on the scale score to determine that 0 to 100 points that will be inserted into the student's grade to calculate the final course grade. However, there are some districts that use achievement levels to develop their conversion scale. Therefore, it's important for you to contact the appropriate person at your school site to obtain the correct information and guidelines for your school and district. This will likely be your department head or your school-based test coordinator. Not only is student performance on the civics end of course assessment included in their, in their grade, but it's also included in school grade calculations. This is another requirement from Florida statute. The Florida legislature has included student proficiency on the two social studies end of course assessments. We have one for civics in middle school, and then we have one for United States history in high school as part of school grades for both high school and middle school. <laughs> to see how school grades are calculated, access the most recent information on the Florida School Grades website. 
the percentage of a school grade for either middle or high school is dependent on the formula used by the Florida Department of Education. The school grade formula varies from year to year based on several factors. The school grade overview provides detailed information, determines the testing calendar for their district assessment information, and dates to the Florida Department of Education. The autonomy at the local level to determine the specific, specific testing dates provides flexibility and scheduling to meet the needs of schools. To obtain the specific testing dates for your school within the testing window, please contact the appropriate person at your school site. This will likely be your school-based test coordinator. So we've administered the assessment. When are we going to get our scores back? The answer for this year may be different from others. At this time, the scores are expected to be returned in June of 2017. The test window closes for all schools, all districts, and all of the NGSS EOC assessments on May 19, 2017. At that time, all test forms from all the districts must be returned. They'll then go through the equating process. Then the scores will be reported. After the EOCA results are returned, the Florida Joint Center for Citizenship will be facilitating another webinar based on understanding your EOCA data. We'll not go into that today. But you can be on the lookout for your scores in early of June 2017. In addition to determining the test windows, the FLDOE provides information about how the assessment will be administered. This portion of the fact sheet explains that the assessment will be administered and delivered via computers unless students have individual education plans or Section 504 plans. The appropriate accommodations are made for students with IEPs or 504s. For questions regarding specific students, your school-based test coordinator should be able to provide you with information and guidance. Information from the item specifications, Appendix D, is also reiterated on the fact sheet, such as the duration of the test and the number of questions. The fact sheet document contains active links that can be used to access computer-based practice tests, known as EPATS. The electronic practice test allows students to experience a simulated version of the assessment. Students are required to participate in an EPAT practice session at their school site prior to testing. We recommend that students, parents, and teachers familiarize themselves with the features and functions associated with TestNav8 by also participating in EPAT practice outside of school-based practice sessions. Select the active link in the fact sheet, fact sheet to easily access the EPAT. Then select the civics practice test. There are eight practice items available in a simulated testing environment. For a feature might serve an extension with the use of different colors. Students can also use when they're taking their civics end of course assessment. In addition to some text coding options and highlights, a strikeout option. This may be helpful for eight questions. When, one, when students want to review a question and their answer, they can bookmark it. Looking through the eight sample items, it's a printed version of the items in the EPAT. It's a type items in the EPAT, which have been drawn from the Civics EOCA test item specification, using all of the items from the Civics EOCA test item specifications. Other than the 35 items in the specifications, there are not any released items or assessments available from the Florida Department of Education. There are some additional resources for instruction, review, and practice assessment, though. The Florida Joint Center for Citizenship has a large repository of resources available for instruction, review, and practice assessment. At floridacitizen.org, there are comprehensive civics resources aligned to benchmarks and designed to meet the needs of all learners K-12. The middle school civics lesson plans and assessment items have been developed to meet the content and rigor outlined in the Civics EOCA test item specification. Each benchmark has at least five assessment practice items. Research has demonstrated that professional educators that have used and continue to use the instructional resources from the Florida Joint Center for Citizenship have increasingly more students perform at and above proficiency on the Civics End of Course Assessment. In addition to the instructional and assessment resources available from the Florida Joint Center for Citizenship, Escambia County School District and FJCC partnered to provide the state with a civics review website. 
The site is free and includes benchmark-based readings, assessment practice, and vocabulary activities. The Scambia County School District and FJCC Review website has been so successful that we've continued our partnership to develop another review resource with enhanced student-friendly feature, features called Civics 360. Civics 360 is an interactive civics review tool to help Florida students improve their understanding of civics. Civics 360 is a service funded by the Lou Fry Institute at the University of Central Florida and provided by the Florida Joint Center for Citizenship in collaboration with Escambia County School District. It targets civic knowledge and skills necessary to succeed on the civics end of course assessment. This website is a resource for students, parents, and teachers. It offers a flexible approach to both instruction and review. In this website, you'll find narrated student-friendly videos that review the important content for each benchmark, complemented by viewing guides for each video, student-friendly readings for each benchmark clarification, available in English, Haitian Creole, and Spanish. <clears throat> there is also um, student-friendly reading guides to support those readings. There are vocabulary activities end-of-course assessment style guided review questions for each benchmark with student appropriate feedback provided. There's also an end-of-course assessment practice test. And then there's additional civics resources to facilitate learning and review. Please be aware that, that um, uh, I'm sorry for interrupting, Peggy. Please be aware that Civics 360, while it is live and it is being used, uh, there are still a couple of bugs in the registration system we are working out, but if you ever have any problems whatsoever with Civics 360 and the registration, all you need to do is email me, uh, because you will all be getting an email from me, and I will address those problems for you. Thank you, Peggy. Sorry for interrupting. Oh, thank you, Steve, for that clarification. We hope that you feel moderately more prepared, if not completely more prepared, for the Civics End of Course Assessment as a result of participation in this webinar. Our next webinar is going to be focused on review and remediation for the Civics End of Course Assessment. Please join us on March 29, 2017 from 4.30 to 5.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for review and remediation for the Civics End of Course Assessment. Thank you for your, thank you for your participation. The recording will stop now, but we'll remain on the line for any additional questions. So uh, these questions have been addressed, but uh, one of the questions was uh, about seeing an old test from the previous year. And uh, we talked about the fact that uh, they reused the test items, so we will not be able to see a sample, t uh, sample actual test. But I did provide them a link to a sample test uh, from Florida Virtual School. Uh, an additional question was from someone I was asking about uh, the sample items in the item specs, uh, and those uh, I did send them a link for the item specifications. Um, Steve, to clarify, uh, I happen to have a copy of a 35-question test that is the item spec the questions in the item specs that have been pulled out to just model an assessment, and I'll drop those in the Google Drive. Excellent. Thank you, Peggy. Mm -hmm. And those are the only items that have been released, and they've been released as part of the item specifications. My understanding from the Test Development Center is that there are no intentions of releasing any items, that the test is still new, and that they are all still in active use. Are there any additional questions from folks? We will uh, have the registration up for the next webinar uh, no later than Monday. Uh, and please do feel free to uh, share with folks. Uh, we will have, uh, we will close the registration the day before the um, webinar uh, because we do need to be able to get questions from folks and know who's coming or who says they're coming, um, but this will go up uh, and out uh, no later than Monday. Thank you. Thank you all. Have a great day. and.
Good luck. Have fun. Go forth and conquer. Thank you. Bye-bye.